Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship on this Christmas day. The Lord is with you. Amen. Amen. Oh, now I'm coming in a little bit better. It seems like, at least for me, and I think for many of you, that Christmas Eve can be more of a, a rush, a lot of details, a lot of schedules, and you know, planning and parties and family gatherings. But Christmas Day is more slowed down. It's a time just to be able to reflect and meditate on and really what uh, the spirit of the occasion. So um, may the Lord bless our time uh, of worship this morning. And we begin now by the light with lighting Christ can the one he had that wreath. And there is a response to read. As we light the Christ candle in our Advent wreath, we remember that God has been faithful and has fulfilled his promise of the Savior. And Christ he brought the light of the world to us and to all peoples. Shine in our lives, that others may be drawn to the manger, and there be hold in faith. Your salvation is Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, in giving us the gift of your Son, you gave us the gift we needed most, the Savior. We are humbled by your mercy and amazed by your love. By the power of your Spirit, open our hearts to receive the fullness of grace that is ours in receiving your Son, Jesus. To the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing.
creation, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is no room at Bethlehem. He gave unto his own, and his own received him not. Most merciful God, we confess that we too are involved in our sins. We turn our backs on you. Our thoughts, our words, our deeds bear the witness to our sinfulness. We cast ourselves on you for the sake of your Son. Forgive our sins. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. The Christ child has come for you personally and has died for all of your sins. He has risen from the grave to give you victory over death and the power of the devil. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to all nations. We sing. may set us free through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 52. 
How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord of Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He's redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. The epistle reading is found in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed to be the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more ex excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame over fire. But of the sun, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your uprighteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel is your ebook. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Yes. The beginning was a word. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received 
grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you be seated, please? <clears throat> Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we have together. I thank you for this good group that's come out despite all the circumstances of life this year and the previous year. And may you uh, richly bless and uh, continue to allow us to know the fullness of your grace uh, in these coming moments. And may you speak to our hearts, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Amen. In his book, God in Unexpected Places, Christian author Philip Yancey talks about a meeting that he had with a, a woman by the name of Joanna down in South Africa. And was, this was in the year 2004. And Joanna was a woman who was uh, half white, half black. She was uh, very involved in the movement towards the abolishing of apartheid discrimination in South Africa. And when that finally took place, and many believed it was miraculous that it did happen, she did not just rest on her laurels. Instead, Joanna sought to, to bring reform to the worst prison in South Africa, a prison that was basically run by the inmates, uh, tattoo-covered men. Um, and in order to be part of a gang, you had to uh, beat up somebody else that the gang was not happy with. And this happened while the guards turned a blind eye. They looked the other way. So alone, this attractive woman went into the bowels of the prison, and she spoke basically a simple message of 
forgiveness and reconciliation. And she got these men to trust her, and they started to share their horrid experiences growing up. And the previous year, there had been 279 attacks. The next year was down to two. And the BBC was so impressed that they sent a, a crew down from London to South Africa to interview her for a documentary. And so Philip Yanty was talking to her and he was playing her more understandings to, to see how this, this took place. And he said he would never forget uh, the circumstance, whereas uh, they were talking and she was moving her wardrobe to her, to her face, but she stopped in the midpoint and she said, but of course you know, Philip, God was already there. I just had to make him visible. And as I thought about that, isn't that the essence of the Christmas message? making God visible. And can we see the first slide? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And John makes this sweeping claim that Jesus is the word. In the Greek, it is logos. And the logos for the Greek people, the Greek culture back then was the organizing principle, the rational principle that put all of the universe together. And John runs with this. And he says, uh, in effect, the logos is not uh, an it something that's a principle, but it's a person. Instead, that Jesus, the Son of God, took on human flesh and became, again, uh, God in, incarnate. Uh, God self-revealed. Uh, simply put, uh, Jesus made God to be visible. And it's a, a glorious message. And St. Paul talks about that. And he says that uh, everything was Jesus before, he was before the creation and all things hold together in him. That he is light in life. But isn't there something when you think about it that reigns on this glorious parade? And I believe it has to do with that last verse you see up on the slide. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it or comprehended it. And what is that darkness? And the scripture defines darkness in two ways. First, it's evil and the suffering because of that, but also it's ignorance. But when it comes to evil, I mean, think about during the time of Jesus. There was violence, there was oppression, there was abuse of power, there was hopelessness, families were being rent apart, there were refugees. I mean, it was a, a time where there was horrendous, seemingly unending grief that people were suffering back then. But frankly, is it any different now? to what's occurring in our world today. And then besides uh, this evil that's in this, in this world, there's also ignorance. And there's ignorance because mankind, men and women, have not found a cure to make things better. Not that there hasn't been a great amount of effort to make things better, there has been. And when it comes to uh, the intellect of man, when it comes to programs like welfare, affirmative action, and I'm sure there's hundreds more. There's been those efforts to make things better, like a, a cure. There's uh, been much in the way of efforts of government and 
Increasingly, our, uh, our administration is moving towards socialism, giving more money to people as an effort. Again, just as a cure that makes things better. And always there's looking to technology, that technology could have the answer. But overall, there's this general understanding that there's darkness in the world, but man can overcome it through intellect, through innovation, that it can get better. And it's, again, looking towards the human source. However, John speaks instead about an alternative, the divine source. And John speaks more about change not coming upon people from, from the outside programs, human resources, but divinely, and it's from the inside out working in people's lives. And frankly, that's really what would happen with Joanna, that lady in South Africa in the, in the prisons, that she went into that darkness. But she worked in people's lives, in the lives of those inmates, to bring them to the point that they would be like her, children of God, changed through the power of God in their lives. And can we see the next slide that talks about that? Yet to all that received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, of a husband's will, but born of God. This new life of light, of a glorious new light. And does the song speak about this? Uh, about a little child in, you know, this little child in Bethlehem. That this little child would be born anew in each one of us. I mean, that's the, the great message of that song, this being born in us and bringing forth this light into our lives. And this light in our lives that is able, like a candle, to, to push back the darkness. And when you think about it, uh, again, concerning light, you consider the sun, the S-U-N. And without the sun, I mean, we'd freeze to death. But then there is a sun who, with his grace and with his truth, is able to bring about transformation, as he did in Joanna's life. Transformation in a, in a person's life where they are able to, to look at life differently and to have a, a new lease on life. But it's a process. Most certainly it was a, a process with Joanna. She heard the word of God, and that word of God created that new life within her. And it was not bios, earthly life, but it was the zoe. It was spiritual life. And zoe is the life that goes on into eternity that's been given to us in our baptism. And zoe is a, a, light, a, a life that is vibrant, that is fulfilling, it brings a greater amount of fulfillment than a, a new house or a new car or a surprise check in the mail. That's, a, that's the life that our first parents, Adam and Eve, had. You know, that glorious life. But then there was that disconnect because of the fall. And there was a darkness that came into this world and we're all well, too well aware of it. But then there would come that one who was the mysterious deliverer. And that was Jesus' promise of reconnection, that those who would believe in him would have this life, this life that is eternal, this life of vibrancy that the world cannot give and the world cannot extinguish. And I think oftentimes we as individuals can make light of this life and of this light